We are looking at a nice day this Tuesday afternoon. Just a few trouble spots, showers and storms all across lower Florida. Also, we have some showers and storms across Minnesota into the Great Lakes. Some severe weather expected on the Great Plains and a weak weather system moving into the western U.S. The tropics are completely devoid of any activity today. A little bit more action going on there in the Pacific. A possible disturbance coming together off Guatemala that could affect the Mexican coast. And Tropical Storm Kiko 200 miles northeast of Hawaii. 35 knots on that, 1008 millibars, which is a very filled weather system, and that will continue moving to the northwest and dissipate. As you can see, the GFS over the next week just showing three disturbances, one easterly wave on Friday, moving through the Atlantic, passing the Leeward Islands around Monday, and just no development on that. Here comes a second one. That has a little bit more development. However, we see that weakening once again and the gfs has been pretty aggressive with the previous cyclones you remember for this week it was forecasting a hurricane in this area and it has backed off on that so the detrimental effects chart does show a substantial amount of shear and dry air throughout the tropics that's one reason we can't really get these systems coming together and at the very end of the period this area opening up a little bit, a little bit more favorable. However, just not seeing much coming together. A little bit more active in the eastern Pacific. This wave originating from Guatemala, passing Acapulco around Thursday and moving out into the Pacific. And that will pretty much consistently track to the west-northwest and be out of the picture. Here comes another system off of the Mexican coast. And this could become something around the Yucatan, around the 18th, 19th. Again, this is way far in the future, so we will just have to take it as it comes. And of course, there goes Tropical Storm Kiko, the eastern sides of the islands getting some showers and heavy surf. And towards the end, there's some very impressive convection starting to blow up there in the northern periphery of the storm. Not sure if that's going to slow down the weakening or lead to some temporary intensification. However, this is moving into cool waters and this entire area just not favorable for further development. And as for the hand that we're dealt with here in the U.S., it is rather quiet. The remnants of that old polar air mass still in place across the northeastern U.S., some of it extending into the Mississippi River Basin. Temperatures rather cool down into the lower to mid 80s throughout the south, but we are going to get a pretty huge warm-up over the next few days. We've got the stationary front down there in Florida helping with that convection. New Pacific weather system moving through California and Nevada, and this little wave up in Nebraska, a little triple point just north of North Platte with a dry line extending south, and we do have a marginal risk of severe extending from North Platte all the way down towards Lubbock. We could see some strong storms anywhere along that dry line, even to the west, since the moisture is not completely scoured out west of the dry line. The main hazards we're looking at for today, just isolated, damaging winds, and large hail. Looking at the northeastern U.S., another pleasant day. Highs in the 70s just about everywhere. We have coastal flood statements from New York City down to Atlantic City, all the way down the east coast. That's in part due to the full moon that we had on Sunday. Still residual gravitational effects from that and the continued easterly onshore component coming down the coast. In the western Great Lakes, beach hazard statements in the central and northern Lake Michigan region High winds and dangerous currents continue with strong southerly flow up the lakes. We saw mid-60s for highs in the Michigan UP, 70s across the Midwest, and 80s in the central Mississippi River region. And some showers and storms extending from Minneapolis across northern Wisconsin. No problems from those. In the southeastern U.S., highs were in the 70s and 80s just about everywhere. Coastal flood statements continue down the coast all the way to Palm Coast, Florida, along with small craft advisories. Those small craft advisories also extending into the Gulf between Cross City and Boothville, Louisiana. Strong east winds, 
20 to 25 knots. Also, the Weather Prediction Center, they've got a slight risk of excessive rainfall in the Miami area for today. In the Southern Plains, continued warm. We started out with a cool morning in parts of East Texas, looking for 90s today, Houston, Austin, all the way up into West Texas. And we've got those storms forming just west of the dry line and that severe weather potential anywhere along that boundary. The slight risk area has been expanded southward towards Canadian Texas and Guymon. So this is going to be a potential area of severe weather as these storms move out and encounter the deeper moisture. Yesterday, we had tornado warnings across southwestern Kansas and northwestern Oklahoma as the afternoon went on. Some very strong storms developed near the Oklahoma-Kansas border. This was the strongest storm. Also, a tornado reported in this storm near Perryton, Texas. Those took place around 6 and 7 p.m. Warm conditions all across the southwest. In Colorado, Denver expecting 87 today, 90 at Pueblo, and upper 80s west of the Divide. Very hot day in the southwest deserts. Phoenix expecting 106, 103 at Tucson, 104 at Needles. This will be the hottest day this week. And just a little bit of cooling for tomorrow. Phoenix still 106, and then we'll see a cooling trend late this week. In California, a wind advisory in the San Bernardino Mountains and San Gabriel Mountains until 1 a.m. Southwest winds will gust to 45 miles an hour. The wind advisory does extend into the Vaca or Victorville area. A bit cooler all throughout California. Downtown L.A. expecting only 80 degrees today. Upper 70s to mid 80s in the San Joaquin Valley. That's 15 degrees cooler than what we saw one or two weeks ago. And for the northwestern U.S., a bit unsettled. Numerous showers and storms all along the Cascades as a modified polar air mass infiltrates the region. Highs in the 70s just about everywhere. The heat is slow to erode in eastern Washington, however. Highs there 83 to 88 degrees. And moving out into the Pacific, well, there's our cold air mass. Modified maritime polar air making its way into California and keeping those highs suppressed. Heading up into Alaska, very stormy in the Aleutians, the Bering Sea, and the Gulf of Alaska. We do have gale warnings all through that area until Wednesday due to northeast winds gusting to 40 miles an hour and seas up to 10 feet. Gale warnings have been extended into the Gulf of Alaska and into Cook Inlet tonight south of Kenai for northeast winds gusting to 30 knots and six foot seas. Small craft advisory into the Anchorage area. No problems inland and they've dropped that flood watch in the Southwest Brooks Range. However, starting to cool off up there on the North Slope, a little bit of snow showing up at Barrow and rain at Koktovik. In Canada, smoke warnings and advisories continue in the Western part of the country. Northwest Territories, Eastern British Columbia, and Northern Alberta. That's been trimmed back a little bit, so maybe they're having some improved conditions. A severe thunderstorm watch is in effect once again for today in Southern British Columbia around Pennington, Kelowna, Kamloops, and Ashcroft, mostly for heavy rain, but they did add strong wind gusts and large hail for today. Moving further to the east around Wawa, we do have a uh, rainfall warning, one to two inches of rain possible there. The other problem area is in Newfoundland, right in here. A frost advisory for tonight. Temperatures down into the 30s across a wide area west of Gander, including Great Grand Falls, Springdale, and Deer Lake. And we look at the 500 millibar chart. This is the key to what's happening. We've got a split flow pattern, one branch up there in Canada, another down south, and this little occlusion up there in northwestern California. So going forward, just a very, uh, this is almost parked there in the western U.S., but gradually by Friday and Saturday, it does start lifting to the northeast. But here comes another trough. That starts closing off into a low pressure area aloft by Sunday, moving across the western states, 
Meanwhile, we've got this ridge across the southern and Midwest area that will help keep those temperatures up through the beginning of next week. Then for the end of the period late next week, well, not much to talk about unless you're in Canada, a very high amplitude pattern up there. So that's conducive to some interesting weather, but not much coming south except maybe in this area. A lot of momentum coming down the backside of that low right there. So this could have an effect in Montana, Wyoming, the High Plains, and so on beyond the 240-hour point. But for the time being, down south, a little bit of ridging. That'll keep those temperatures up for the middle of September. And let's take a look at those monsoon charts, 45 to 55 in Arizona. You can see the increasing influence of the westerlies, and that will pretty much be the story through the remainder of September. So we're going to see less and less of this monsoon pattern because this westerly flow does tend to be kind of dry. We still have some good southerly flow through midweek, 45 to 52 there. So probably most of the showers there in the higher terrain near the Continental Divide, eastern Arizona. Still pulling in some moisture for late week. But you can see that drawing gradually coming in from the west as that cool air mass makes its way eastward. So we got 30s across most of the lower deserts by Friday. The moisture shifts into New Mexico. And gradually by Sunday, it looks like everybody is dry. And we'll just take that into the extended, see what goes on. Southerly flow does return. We've got a little bit of this anticyclonic flow. So some storms in southeastern Arizona for next week. And towards uh, 18th and 19th, moisture lurks down to the south, but plenty of dry air in the northern part of the southwest. As far as the rest of the country, we do have a weak low-level jet in West Texas, some enhanced moisture across Kansas, and some upslope flow through western Kansas. So we haven't completely shut down the storm pattern, and it actually looks like through the remainder of the week, maybe into early next week, continued southerly flow. There's 10 grams per kilogram. That's sufficient to get storms going, and some of that makes its way into the Dakotas for Thursday and Friday. Continued southerly flow through the weekend, 40 to 45 knot low-level jet into the central plains Saturday and Sunday, and just continued on through next week. So this kind of illustrates how we're in a stagnant weather pattern. Most of the moisture confined to the central plains, and you can see the influence of that uh, northeasterly flow in the Gulf region, a rather strong area of high pressure that is centered inland probably dynamically reinforced and producing this outflow of dry air from the eastern U.S. A quick look at temperatures from the National Digital Forecast Database. 106 there for Phoenix, 104 for Needles. Much the same tomorrow, although a little bit cooler in the lower Colorado River region. The heat really ramps up across the Arklatex, the lower Mississippi River Valley in Texas, lots of 90s, and it gets worse as we go into Friday. So kind of a heat wave expanding into the Midwest, the Ohio River Valley over the weekend and persisting into Monday, although we see some erosion from the north. As far as low temperatures, here's the lows tomorrow morning. A little bit warmer in the northeast with 40s and a few 50s. We start to see cooler air spreading in from the west across the Great Basin area and by Friday moving into the Rockies in Colorado. Temperatures drop over Saturday and Sunday looking for 30s at Alamosa and Aspen. 35 would be the coldest temperature so far this season in that part of Colorado. Then for Monday, much the same. Meanwhile, in the southern U.S., the deep south, some rather warm conditions, lots of lower 70s. So let us put the maps into motion. This is the GFS output, but we do have the manually analyzed fronts done by myself. Of course, I did a lot of extensive forecasting in the Air Force. So you're seeing my experience here being plotted on the maps. This is my best guess of where the fronts are located. So one stationary front through Florida, another in the central plains. Here's the specific system gradually 
very slowly moving eastward and it gradually gets decimated by that strong heating in the deserts and of course they will return to hot temperatures for next week so let's uh, take that forward for tonight another cold night in the north northeastern u.s 40s and 50s there pockets of 50s into the ozarks and the arklatex then a slow warming trend sets in for wednesday no severe weather expected we could see scattered storms all through the central and northern high plains across the Rockies and the Great Basin area. Good chance for heavy showers in eastern Oregon and western Idaho, especially in this area here. Rains continue in Florida along that continued quasi-stationary front. We go into Thursday. Now we're looking at a marginal risk in the western Dakotas along this frontal system as we get heating underway. So by evening, here's how it looks. Convergence right across western North Dakota, Looks like mostly high wind and hail, but there could be an isolated tornado within that. In the western U.S., the cool air reaches the eastern Great Basin region. Highs drop to 81 at Salt Lake City, and it will get even cooler for Friday, 70s. Heavy showers will be developing along this front in the Four Corners area, especially Colorado and New Mexico, Farmington, Durango, and some of those towns in here, I guess, Telluride. We go into Friday... This front starts to lose definition, but still extensive showers all through New Mexico, Colorado for one more day. We'll see a very hot day across the south, lots of 90s, even mid-90s, especially Shreveport to Memphis. Texarkana expected to reach 99. For Saturday, a cold start to the morning all through the Rockies, lots of 30s and lower 40s. Denver, however, 53 for a low. Warm conditions as you go west. Chicago looking for a high of 87 on Saturday. Des Moines, 92. And at Minneapolis, 85. And we go through the rest of the weekend. Looks even cooler for Sunday morning. We get those 30s out there. 35 at Alamosa. And then for Monday, the Rockies begin to moderate. But cool air starts to move in from the Pacific once again. And... Uh, this could bring some more unsettled weather to the Great Basin area and the northern and central Rockies for midweek. And just a stationary front late next week and possibly some cold air developing up to the north. We'll have to see about that. And that's it for this episode of Forecast Lab. Some good news about that virus that has been circulating in our house. I think uh, my family is feeling better now. So some good news there, and fortunately, I've not caught whatever that is. I want to thank our newest supporters, people like Dr. Yuri Mom and Nicholas Lifka and the others who have pitched in last month and the month before that. I keep thinking about, you know, how I can give everybody credit. One of these days, I'll probably sit here and read everybody's name and thank them individually, but... I don't want to do that here because we'll run off another uh, 10 minutes of program time and that's probably best done on another day. But thank you if you've contributed. That does help keep the program going. We'll see you back here again on Friday for another edition. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.